Author Ron Rommel was about to publish a book revealing what he believed to be the real purpose of the Star Wars project when his body was found here in McClay Park in Portland, Oregon. His death was ruled suicide, but few agree with that verdict. As far as the police and the FBI are concerned, it's case closed. Uh, unfortunately, there's the shocking thing that his murderer, I believe his murderer, is still out there at large. Why is it you're speaking out? There have been enough lives taken uh, under the premise of suicide when they were actually very stable individuals. Always had, a, uh, they always had, they had families and they had uh, lives to look forward to, and they had every reason to live. And, and if there is some form of conspiracy out there, then the more people that are talking might end up saving lives in the long run. The Great in 1954 Treaty would have been violated. After, after the great firefight, the alien-human war, I am the only living survivor talking about it worldwide at all. Only one. The other two are in nursing homes in Canada, and the Canadian government refuses to allow any U.S. people, including myself, to talk to them because they are afraid of kidnap. Probably the reason I got shot to pieces and 11 attempts on my life is I am a telephone approximately three years ago and in person about two years ago and during that period of time I became very well acquainted with him. He was at that time still working for the government and he didn't say much about what he did but nonetheless over a period of time I became well acquainted with him. I found him to be a person of integrity and honesty and about one year ago he became totally fed up with the New World Order and the establishment. He thought he was working for the betterment of mankind and the work that he was doing as a geologist for our government as well as for NATO. And he found out that it could be and was actually anything but that. So his revelations became, in many respects, my revelations. And I urged him last winter and spring to go public and lecture. Finally got him out. He's given over 30 lectures to date all very successful, very interesting. In fact, so successful there have been 13 attempts on his life since the beginning of the year. And he survived them all. All I can say is God must be protecting him because he has a message. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Phil Schneider and understand also everything is being recorded and the video and audio tapes will be available later. Please give a warm welcome to Phil Schneider. Thanks, Al. I guess uh, I can always start off by saying loose lips sink ships. Uh, uh, that's almost a pun anymore. I'm Phil Schneider. I worked 17 years for the United States government as a geologist and uh, aerospace engineer as well as a structural engineer. I worked for uh, such elusive uh, and elusive occupations uh, uh, with uh, Boris and Knudsen, Bechtel, Page and Page, uh, Aerospecial of France, uh, uh, and a host of other, uh, EG and G, and a host of other Los Alamos laboratory and these kind of things. But uh, rather than bore you with all those statistics, uh, I've got a uh, cooked up a real mixed bag here 
of uh, different uh, topics, and it uh, might be a little bit uh, like brain overload, but uh, I'll start from the beginning. Now, now, like I said, I worked 17 years, uh, uh, co-invented uh, methods of shape charge blasting as well as uh, laser rock deflagration, which means uh, uh, rock is uh, literally uh, uh, melted or, or, or powdered by a, a special uh, maser laser combination. Uh, and the residue of the rock uh, underneath uh, is, uh, is applied as a coating, as a liquid coating, kind of like uh, instant agate, if you could uh, imagine a hunk of agate, uh, which is a hard silica mineral. Uh, rock actually. But uh, up here we have uh, another topic. This is uh, an area to where I worked. I worked 11 years of the 17 years at Groom Lake, uh, S4, S2. Uh, it's in the Nellis uh, Air Force Base uh, uh, area. Uh, in fact, Groom Lake is, uh, I'll show you in the picture right here. It's right here. Groom Lake is uh, quite the place. Uh, a lot of rumors and other kinds of things have come out of there. Uh, of course, people have stood on the outside for years and uh, wondered at uh, what's been flying there. There's all kinds of things been flying. Uh, let me give you a brief overview. Uh, start in ancient history land here. Back in 1909, the U.S. Cavalry was uh, uh, engaged in uh, catching some banditos that had crossed over the Mexican border into a place called Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. And they went into a cave or a hideout of, and killed the so-called bandits. But what they found out, they couldn't explain. And uh, they were called horseshoe craft at that time, or uh, horseshoe ships. Um, there were UFOs, and they uh, saw these, uh, what they called demons gray demons, uh, little gray guys uh, all, all around the place. That was in 1909. Now in 1933, our government was actively engaged uh, with the Europeans, mostly the French and the English, in uh, special uh, researches uh, dealing with uh, uh, aerial phenomenon. And once again, the term flying saucer or flying disc didn't come about until uh, much later, uh, uh, supposedly right around the mid-1940s. Um, anyway, uh, the whole thing here is that uh, also in 1946, I might want to add, uh, we were engaged in uh, atomic bomb testing and. Uh, this, this kind of a like, and uh, of course the area of Bikini Atoll. Uh, some of the pictures are over here on the uh, on the uh, white board, uh, are showing with the actual uh, language of the, both the U.S. Army and U.S. Navy uh, archives. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, these uh, flying ships were seen as early as 1945, 46. Uh, some of them were called Foo Fighters and you name it. Uh, they were fully known about uh, maybe as early as 1935 or 36 by our U.S. Navy. And uh, there was a shallow underwater base at Bikini Island, and that was probably the one reason why uh, a number of atomic bombs were exploded in that area rather than other areas which they could have been even more remote out in the South Pacific. Uh, at Operation Crossroads. Well, um, anyway, this all led up to uh, uh, later on, about six, eight years later, uh, uh, 1954, uh, during the Eisenhower administration, uh, led to a uh, interesting treaty uh, called the Grieta 1954 Treaty. Uh, it was the Alien Human Treaty. And uh, uh, supposedly the aliens had come in and exchanged technology and they'd uh, want to take an occasional human being and a few head of cows and accurate books were supposedly to be kept and uh, all this kind of stuff and 
Um, of course, eventually all that broke down, and uh, uh, aliens are notorious for being uh, liars, even greater liars than uh, so-called, in quote, we humans are. Uh, so uh, uh, alien treaties are often uh, uh, just not even the pieces of paper they're written on. They're just really kind of worthless. Anyway, my work as a geologist in building underground uh, military bases, some of which are over two miles underground. And uh, I think uh, when you listen to Al tonight, if you have a chance to listen to him, uh, uh, he will speak of, uh, Al's actually been on some of the high-speed monorail uh, uh, subway cars, if you might want to call them, that link these bases together. Some of them are capable of uh, uh, riding on a cushion of air about three quarters of an inch off a rail at, at a better part of Mach 2. And uh, he's actually been on one of these trains. I've only been in one of the tunnels and helped build some of the tunnels. Incidentally, I helped work on 13 deep underground military bases. Actual had hands-on experience. Uh, uh, Notorious was the one in, uh, in and around the Dulce, the southern, the southeastern and southwestern sides of Dulce, New Mexico in the Los Alamos uh, laboratory regions where we built some hermetically sealed rooms that were very deep, uh, going down over a mile. Um, we also built uh, an additions onto uh, uh, Groom Lake and S2 and S4 complexes. Uh, there are a total of nine underground, are called, they're called DUMS, like you can learn a lot from this dummy, but uh, D-U-M-B stands for Deep Underground Military Base. And uh, or a deep underground, a uh, dumb two, for instance, is a submarine base, and I helped build a few of those too, which are uh, uh, off our continental shelves and then certain islands and uh, out in the Atlantic and the Pacific in strategic locations. Um, all this, uh, I can hardly, uh, in an hour's time, I can hardly squeeze all this in. So I'll, I'll be kind of rambling here if you just bear with me. The main topic of my discussion here is to link up basically what's going on with these deep underground military bases, what they're being used for, what is the present situation now being employed both by our federal government, which is slowly being phased out by the uh, United Nations government, as well as the New World, end quote, the New World Order, which is an even uh, uh, higher entity, and who these higher entities are taking their orders from, and try and link up uh, basically uh, what's going on. A lot of us have been kept in the dark. Uh, we've been given, uh, uh, maybe most recently over here, uh, uh, photographs of an alien at Roswell. I'll just very make a very brief statement about that. The photographs cannot stand up to a computer grain analysis test and therefore are retouched or faked. Uh, they're not real. The real one, uh, the real photograph of the, of the charred or dead alien that was, uh, or one of the several that were uh, autopsied is, uh, over here was given to me by a friend by the name of Skip Fromback of Seattle. And his father worked uh, as one of the principal doctors. He was from Germany um, at the time and uh, uh, worked uh, on some of the autopsy uh, material, from what I understand, uh, along with other people. <clears throat> anyway, uh, don't you? You just can't believe everything, and that goes for me. You got to get out there and do your homework. Like I always say. Uh, you might, uh, don't put your spectacles on, you put your skepticals on when you listen to me. So if we can, uh, if we can have a show of hands here, how many people have heard about uh, Roswell, New Mexico? Yeah, very good, almost all. And how many people have heard about the uh, uh, black helicopters uh, and the uh, other kinds of flying saucers type uh, equipments out at uh, Groom Lake and other places? Very good. Well, this obviously is a nice enlightened audience. Uh, most of you have probably seen what a black helicopter is. 
or maybe even gotten rare uh, glimpses of uh, an F-117A black jet or stealth, as they're uh, often called, um, or a B-2 bomber, B-1 bomber, or some of these other uh, uh, sophisticated aircraft that are now being uh, touted as the new technology. Once again, where did we get this new technology? Well, obviously we've had a little hand in that. Uh, our little alien uh, so-called buddies, haha, uh, have uh, kind of exchanged things, not without a great cost. Uh, the cost of which has been uh, a lot of people uh, have disappeared. Some, and I'll blow this statistic by you. There's, uh, according to current FBI and Defense Intelligence Agency and CIA statistics, 100,000 children and 1 million adults disappear every year and these are not kidnappings or murders or rapes or suicides or anything totally unaccounted for and where are these people going to nobody knows maybe one of us uh, in this room or or somebody has uh, has uh, encountered uh, such an individual and lost a loved one or a friend or something and that's unfortunate uh, my best friend uh, ron lee rummel uh, uh, several years ago, got himself murdered because we dared to put out uh, in print, at that time I was still working for the government and so was he, uh, we dared to put in print uh, the uh, so-called the Strategic Defense Initiative or Star Wars as uh, part of the New World Order and takes its uh, uh, actions. It was uh, originally written as a kind of a spoof or a joke. Uh, we had uh, one of these uh, alien greys dressed up and uh, had uh, New World Order insignia on, and of course that wasn't taken very nicely, and uh, um, my friend got uh, himself uh, murdered. It was called a suicide, but now it's been uh, turned over to uh, special authorities who now acknowledge it was a homicide. Uh, other than that, um, I'd like to also mention something about my father. My father was a, a U-boat captain in, in Hitler's Navy, and uh, he got captured and uh, taken over. Uh, I didn't find this out until about two weeks before he died on his deathbed. He kind of told everybody in total shock. Um, I was one of them. Uh, I, in fact, I didn't believe him. I thought he was kind of del in delirium or something like that. And, of course, other things have come up since. And so, um, anyway, he was uh, captured by the French, turned over to the Third Army, the U.S. Third Army, and then U.S. Third Army turned him over to the Navy. And he was a master machinist. Now, that's not a journeyman. A master means that he's, uh, they can take a block of metal and make a gun or a watch or some other fine instrument. And uh, uh, he was a master machinist. He later became an MD doctor and uh, part of the aerospace medicine group of the United States Navy. Was instrumental in helping build the USS Nautilus and its uh, first uh, nuclear-powered uh, 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 predecessor, the uh, uh, Enterprise, the first nuclear-powered uh, aircraft carrier and other, other ships like it. He pioneered all the ways in, uh, in building uh, uh, very small and miniature nuclear in, uh, engines. And, uh, um, he even helped build, uh, helped work later on in his life, he helped uh, develop the infamous uh, grid bed nuclear motor, which is now employed in some things that look like flying saucers that people claim are flying saucers. Yes, we are, we, in quote, the United States Air Force and other armed forces are training other European forces to fly unidentified or now identified or in quote flying saucers. We've actually built built several prototypes that are flying under uh, the uh, under uh, uh, names of uh, uh, black craft. My position as a geologist and engineer got me to see a lot of things in the world. I've been in over 70 countries. also worked for NATO. I carried a level 3 security clearance with a rhyolite factor. Rhyolite is a hardened factor. 
only given out to a handful of civilians and maybe a couple of hundred military men worldwide. Um, I thought I was doing uh, the nation, uh, the United States, as well as the world a favor by, uh, I thought I was uh, uh, kind of keeping my end up. Uh, well, it didn't work out that way. I was to later find out that these underground bases are now being employed as strategic bases for in case there is martial law in this country. Right now our military professors that uh, used to be in war colleges and the like are training people like uh, ex-Russian KGB and uh, Spetsnaz people right here on American soil. I've seen it with my own two eyes, along with other people, other geologists. By the way, I'm still a geologist, still do geological survey work. However, I don't work for the government anymore. I uh, took my uh, security clearance and all my government uh, stuff and uh, cut it up and sent it back to the, pardon my French, uh, SOBs. Uh, when I found out that a number of these 131 deep underground military bases are being used to subvert the Constitution of these United States and its people, I says, that is enough. I, I can't possibly be connected. Oh, well, Mr. Schneider, you can't quit, they said. Well, I says, yes, I can. I'm an individual, I'm going to quit, and uh, I'm walking off the job. And he says, so I got arrested and casually told, well, you, you got to finish a job. And so I, I caved into that part, and I finished three weeks, and then I, uh, uh, at that time my father was dying, and uh, I was allowed home, and uh, I never went back for my paychecks. Uh, don't intend to either. These people are beginning to show signs of being our utmost enemy. I'm talking about military people now engaged in training foreign troops on American soil, clearly against the Bill of Rights and the U.S. Constitution. It's, it's, it's why we formed a government, why our forefathers formed a government, a republic, of these United States in the first place, way back 200 plus years ago. Because the drawing and quartering of soldiers, uh, taxation without representation, law by edict, otherwise known as today's version, uh, executive order, among other things. The very reasons that we became, in quote, free, a free republic, a free society, possibly one of the greatest nations to ever uh, be a nation on this earth um, were instilled in our founding fathers that are now so far away from uh, uh, the people now running our federal government structure. So I'm here today to touch upon a number of subjects, uh, one being that these underground bases, uh, roughly uh, uh, over three of them per state, there's now instead of 12 prison camps, there's 39, that's almost one per state. Um, they're building two prison camps every seven, seven months. They're building two underground me uh, military bases every year. Each one of these military bases, by the way, these underground military bases, they cost somewhere between 17 and 26 billion dollars, billion dollars. They employ 1,800 to 10,000 workers each in varying grades of uh, skill. They uh, uh, gobble up uh, uh, totally through the black budget, over one quarter of the black budget, or roughly uh, 310 billion dollars. Of course, you may say, you know, where are these figures coming from? Well, the black budget, as we know it, in quote, black projects, uh, which uh, anything called black um, is significant of hidden, uh, hidden from uh, Congress, hidden from the American people, and very few people are even in the know about it at all. 
But black budget uh, per year garners over $500 billion a year. And it's uh, uh, these kind of huge quantities and sums of monies are garnered through uh, CIA drug activity, National Security Agency uh, 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 clandestine uh, operations, uh, mostly in Panama and South America. Um, uh, now also engaged in Russia in, uh, in, uh, um, in bringing and refining uh, strategic metals. By the way, you might want to ask, where is all these uh, kind of interesting uh, new metals coming from? Over here on the white board, we have the new periodic table. It's got 140 elements. Now, in our high schools of today, I was in a high school about a week ago, I saw a new periodic table it had 105 elements on it. Now, somewhere, we're not being told the truth. We're being lied to at every turn and every corner. We're considered less than morons, morons. Uh, so the government has uh, made itself an entity, an independent taxing body, an entity into itself, and does, isn't accountable to anybody, not even the so-called New World Order. Uh, they, they just go ahead and do uh, everything willy-nilly as they please. There's nobody checking. You don't have to worry about this. Occasionally there's a senator who pokes a nose in here and there, and, and that senator finds out uh, uh, either nicely or not so nicely uh, that uh, you don't do things like that. Now, um, if we're to gain a grip on our country, if we're to take our country back, we must first ask our public officials if they cannot tell us the truth, and uh, we will impeach them, or they will be impeached or they'll be tried as traitors. This is pretty stiff language. Uh, already it's uh, slowly beginning to trickle out and to occur to a number of people that this may be the only way out. And also our founding fathers, uh, George Washington, Patrick Henry, and a, a few of the other ones uh, came up and said that, uh, that you don't want to let the beast out of the box. And they were talking about a runaway government. You don't want to allow your government to become like England at that time. And, uh, and so uh, they warned us about this very same kind of thing. First of all, the United States is not a democracy. It's not a republic anymore. It should be a republic. That's to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Why, you, why we can't even pray in the public schools anymore. We have to have a Supreme Court judge or group of them, plus uh, Janet Reno and company, among other things, uh, telling us uh, what to do. Uh, interpret for us as if we cannot read with our own two eyes and understand with our mind. Uh, this, of course, is bad policy all the way around. And uh, uh, we, I guess I don't need to blow that by your ears. Okay, on another subject, I have a number of items up here at the table, uh, one of which here is, uh, an, if I can show it, is a heavy hunk of rock indeed. It uh, has a weight of about uh, a little bit more than a pound, two and a half times the weight of uranium. It's not radioactive, can never be made radioactive. It's composed of of earth, rare earth, clays, and powdered metals, as well as alien element, an alien element, uh, uh, mostly from crashed, retrieved uh, flying saucers and those the kind that have happenstance to crash in our deserts and backyards, so to speak. It's called miranite. Well, this is employed in every stealth aircraft, every black jet throughout the black budget. Also, in the uh, in the very small quantities in the skins of uh, black helicopters, Miranite. Here's another thing, here's a piece of uh, probably the purest titanium you'll ever hear or see. It's uh, so pure, it's also composed with uh, uh, other alien elements to make it extremely tough. It's capable of withstanding temperatures in excess of 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
our new Phoenix class submarines, of which we're building two a month right now. Phoenix class submarines is a black budget program. Each one of those submarines costing $208 million just for the titanium hull, which is made of this material. Approximately 10,000 pounds of it. Now, we've got supposedly, as of, as of the data right now, we've got 106 of these submarines. They're plying the waters and the waves. They can dive to a depth of over 7,000 feet and hold that for three months. It's a fantastic submarine indeed. It has 11 grid bed nuclear motors on it, engines, that run everything, purify the air. And, uh, by the way, these aren't your usual um, nuclear uh, uh, motor installation. They're very small. They're probably no bigger than this podium. Uh, weighing less than 3,000 pounds, putting out as much as uh, the equivalent of uh, three uh, aircraft carriers of the Enterprise class. But uh, these Phoenix class submarines are getting this metal. Now, where are we getting the metal? Uh, well, yeah, it's being stockpiled in a number of strategic locations. Supposedly, uh, I've heard stories, well, it's being mined on the moon, and I have no way of proving that one way or another. Uh, I think we're probably getting it from Russia uh, or and, and or refining it in outer space. What are we uh, shuttling, uh, 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 basically a shuttle, uh, a secret fl uh, shuttle flight, one a week now is going up and back. What are they shuttling? Well, obviously, they've got kind of their own little uh, laboratories up there, space station and all this kind of stuff. Remember, what you're being told is only just a smattering of the truth. It's not the real truth. Maybe it's 5% of the truth. Maybe it's not even that. You can rest assured it's not. you're not getting much. Another uh, strategic metal is this particular bar with some strange crystals on it, the scalenohedral crystals of niobium, titanium, rhenium, copper oxide. This complex group of uh, elements not found on the Earth in specific quantities. This was uh, developed at uh, uh, Los Alamos through EG&G and other outfits. Uh, are employed in all black jet uh, aircraft, all of them, including the in quote sport model, the little flying saucer we uh, occasionally see over at Groom Lake. And by the way now, if uh, we happen to be uh, with a video camera, you know, uh, taking pictures of the so-called area around Groom Lake, it's now uh, you, you can you can get your equipment confiscated, your car, your house. You're considered the same thing as a drug dealer, and you'll go to jail for uh, five year, up to five years, and a million dollar fine. I personally don't think this is what I'm hearing. Uh, I, I, I just don't think that uh, this uh, kind of punitiveness is what we need in America, and we have to get rid of it, otherwise we're going to die with no America. Uh, here's some other elements. Here's a very light element. It's uh, composed of uh, lithium metal, as well as a alien element uh, a little heavier than hydrogen, but a little lighter than helium, also employed in this. It's uh, used uh, in secretive methods of uh, propulsion. And it also is in a peculiar scalenohedral crystalline form. And anything scalenohedral, and by the way, a scalene triangle is uh, no side is equal to another side. A scalenohedral metallic crystalline structure is definitely alien element or alien uh, uh, technology converted over to our own technology. These uh, were given to me about a year ago. They're called alien, uh, um, alien or uh, aurora drops. Uh, it's supposedly the skins of the black jets, uh, uh, some of the ones that are coming in at very high rates of speed. Uh, they're still glowing. Uh, red hot to white hot and they'll sit out there and cool off and they're dripping their material off of them and it's kind of like a, 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 a rubberized coating uh, uh, 
Uh, it's not rubber, I can tell you that. This is hard as uh, lava rock or harder, capable of withstanding tremendous temperatures. But nonetheless, some of it sloughs off every time, and so they just kind of scoop it up and throw it in the trash can. There are a few pieces of it. Here's one of the hardest uh, uh, so-called man-made rocks. Uh, once again, it, uh, it's, uh, it's got uh, a number of alien uh, uh, counterpart. Uh, uh, it's got an alien crystalline structure to it, very advanced. It's uh, about 11 times harder than a diamond, about 70 times stronger than a diamond, capable of standing temperatures in excess of 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It is imposed, employed as very thin coatings or windows, tiny windows, in hypersonic aircraft, aircraft that exceed Mach 5. Here's uh, an interesting artifact. Right here in this hunk of rock, which by the way was an old 100,000 year old chipping tool found in uh, Syria, uh, Jordan rather, excuse me, uh, is a imprint of, it looks like a fossil but it's not, it's an imprint of a small mechanical part with a, exactly 360 kind of little rotor blades. Well, this rock is 220 million years old. Who was uh, making machines 220 million years ago? Maybe Von Doniken was right after all, huh? Here we have a actual piece of agatized fruit, or it's similar to a lime. It's even been pecked by a bird at one time, and that's still there. So it was instantly turned to agate. It is the same agate or chemical structure as material found at Hiroshima and Nagasaki after the A-bombings in World War II, where grasses and flowers and fl uh, fl petals of flowers and other kinds of things were instantly petrified, turned to agate. It is the same identical crystalline structure. However, this particular piece is about 20 million years old, and it's still got its original green coating, and it's uh, basically unchanged, perfect condition. Uh, likewise, here's a garlic plant about uh, somewhere between uh, 20 and 35 million years of age. And once again, it's got that same pink agate coating. And here are uh, some pieces of the metal skin from the crash disk at Roswell. Uh, it was given to me when I was 14 years old. My father was uh, visiting uh, one of his old friends in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, the Navy archives as well as he was in the uh, Royal Navy in England and I as a 14 year old boy I says gee uh, dad can I have uh, can I ask uh, Johnny something oh go ahead ask him get anything you can from him you know that kind of thing I says well gee uh, Johnny well do you think I can have a piece of this uh, metal oh no no you can't have that and I says oh I'll give it to the kid what the heck he won't have it very long anyway well I've had it all this time kind of a unique thing. Uh, they were able to break the skin of that craft, by the way, by dropping it into a bath of liquid nitrogen, hitting it with a mechanical or hydraulic hammer, and it shattered into little bits. And it was later analyzed and, uh, and adapted for our own technology. All these artifacts are fine, but once again, the main part of this talk is where is it all leading to? We get very little spin-off to uh, where any of this is leading to. Occasionally we'll get a new computer or maybe a, a quartz watch or, or some uh, little trinket, uh, like uh, uh, kind of like giving the Indians beads a couple of hundred years ago while we're getting these little spin-offs. But the black budget still rolls on, garnering up over a, a trillion dollars every two years. It's somewhere between 1.023 trillion and 1.31 trillion dollars every two years. And every every year it goes by and the black budget is unchecked, un, un, unaccounted for, it's just subverting our country. That's number one. Number two is that these underground military, first of all, if there was something like a nuclear war or, or uh, uh, there was a definite enemy out there where uh, we were 
going to be under attack, uh, like from China or someplace like that. I could see maybe a, a, a couple of dozen underground bases uh, for our government, and uh, uh, so it, it could theoretically come, come uh, rise up like the phoenix out of the ashes. Well, not 131 of these. And uh, if you were going to uh, so-called round people up and put them in prison camps, well, what a better prison camp than underground, where uh, nobody knows where it is anyway. So uh, once again, uh, these underground bases uh, are most likely been planned as uh, underground prison camps and uh, slave labor factories for the New World Order. New World Order, by the way, is getting, and I'm probably the only person ever talking about this, the New World Order is taking, and the United Nations is taking its uh, orders from, uh, believe it or not, uh, these more powerful outer space alien uh, entities, uh, we might call them the large greys or the small greys. Uh, sinister forces indeed. And uh, you might want to say, well, gee, how come we don't see more of this kind of thing? Well, uh, you can just imagine. If you're only being told 5% uh, or less of the truth, uh, that isn't very much to go on. That's one thing. Another thing is uh, you don't find very many people coming up here and, and letting you have hands-on experience. I'm going to try and do this to you. However, I do ask you to go out and do your homework and keep doing it. Don't necessarily believe in what I'm saying, but get out there and and talk to people. Whether it's just a couple of neighbors or friends or, or something, get out there and talk. Because one will tell two and two will tell four and then pretty soon you have a whole room full of people that are in the know. And then from there, uh, wonders can work. Well, other than that, as far as changing the black budget, uh, these clandestine programs. Public opinion is only going to be that, going to do that, and it's going to take millions of us. But we have to be informed, and to do that, we have to be doing what we're doing now, gathering and talking. And, of course, most of us are adults and can weed out fact from fiction. Most of us are responsible adults and know the difference between fact and fiction and how to use it or how to abuse it. And so we therefore have to continue to keep studying and keep talking. If there's just me out there, and believe it or not, there aren't very many people like myself out there talking. Uh, I've given over 30 talks in the United States, Canada, Japan, um, uh, went over to England, kind of, well, went to Japan kind of illegal, came back the same weekend. Uh, they, they flew me in and out, but uh, gave a talk to a number of their execs, and they were very interested indeed. Now, if, I was, uh, if this was all a bunch of poppycock and hooey and poo-poo, uh, I might, uh, I wouldn't be listened to uh, be, be given an audience by these people, but evidently I have. But 13 attempts on my life since the first of this year. I there's a number of you ladies present, so I won't gore you out. But uh, Al has seen uh, some of the wounds, and there's a few other people that have been to a few of my other lectures, and they can attest that I have been shot, uh, I've been uh, run off the road, I've been uh, pushed off the road, I've been uh, mostly shot at, and that kind of thing like that but I've uh, uh, been in hand-to-hand -hand combat with some of these people. And, I'm, and once again, I'm not in the best of shape anymore, but I still know how to handle myself. And uh, I'm just about ready to wrap things up here, uh, but just basically wanted to give you an overview of, uh, of uh, uh, what's happening. And uh, if we have any questions, we can uh, start a asking a few questions. Okay, here's a gentleman way over here. Would you please speak up loud? Yes, uh, I was involved in a uh, in 1979 in August, late August of 1979. 
Uh, I was involved uh, working through Los Alamos Laboratories at Dulce, New Mexico, uh, in uh, what's now known as the Alien Human War. 66 Secret Service agents, government workers, geologists, and the like. I almost got, I almost uh, bit the dust. I could have been number 67. Uh, uh, lost their lives that day because the government lied and uh, knew full well what was underneath. And what we'd done is, out in the desert there, we had we had drilled four in a period of a couple of days. We drilled four of these holes that went down several thousand feet, and uh, uh, one of these holes kept bringing up uh, dirty dust and uh, putrefying odors and broken off uh, broken off. Uh, machine bits and other kinds of things like that, and boring machines as well as uh, lasers came up uh, damaged. And of course, there was a probe that was sent down, and that came up totally missing, and so people were sent down there, and I was one of the people. And uh, when I got down there, of course, the odor was, and remember, I was in a spacesuit-type environment. Uh, all I had was a small tool belt with a uh, uh, special sensors, a small rock hammer, and a, a rock sack for mineral specimens, and other kinds of things like that. And I had my little pistol. And, uh, being an engineer, didn't have time to carry a big hunk of pistol like most of these green berets carry, stuff like that, black berets. I carried a little Walther PPK with a nine-shot clip. Now, as soon as I got down this hole, standing about from uh, from me to uh, this gentleman over here in the, in the front row. Uh, 10 or so feet away, 7 feet away, something like that, was uh, uh, one of these 7 foot tall stinking alien guys. And I didn't waste any time. I said, I'm not fiddling with you guys. And boom, away you go. And um, uh, I had, I was one of the rare few that had been lured that this may or may not occur. Uh, and uh, so uh, basically was uh, given ET training. But a lot of these other people weren't. And we were, uh, in fact, it was asked, are there aliens in the area? And of course, the uh, big question was no. Um, and that was a big lie. And of course, 66 people died that day. Uh, I have a big hole in my chest. I lost a lung. My lung was literally burnt out of me. My fingers burnt off of me. My toenails burnt off of me. My skin was. Uh, and it was in ice and radiation isolation uh, therapy for 400 plus days. Uh, my bones were vitrified or burnt. Um, I was cooked. I managed to survive. Here, telling you something about it today. But other than that, I'm the only talking survivor. There are only two other survivors, and they're in nursing homes up in Canada. And Canada refuses to allow the United States officials to talk to them. They're in very bad shape indeed. One of them can't talk and the other one doesn't want to. So, they're, and they're, Cana they're regarded as Canadian heroes. And so, uh, they're in being kept by Canada. Okay, this fellow over here. Speak up loud. Actually, yes, there's uh, several. In fact, uh, as I was coming uh, to this uh, talk, uh, I uh, was uh, supposed to be here by plane, but uh, there was a subsequent follow-up. Um, anyway, I drove all the way and did it in one day. Uh, but uh, as I was coming over, over uh, up near Cheyenne, there I noticed the military, uh, Air Force, and the Army are building a so-called new, in quote, boot camp, prison camp, right up in Cheyenne, brand new. And I was here three months ago, I wasn't there. So it's something brand new. In Colorado, yes, there's about four underground uh, bases, one being at Denver International Air Base. Um, I call it Air Base, a spaceport, or whatever you want to call it. Denver International Airport. No wonder your uh, luggage uh, 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 gets lost. There are eight levels underneath the airport uh, tarmac there, in quote tarmac or cement mac. Uh, uh, yeah, so those bags could be there uh, for a damn long time. Uh, why, uh, just imagine uh, 
if this was instantly turned to agate uh, 30 or more million years ago, those bags could very well be the same way. <laughs> so yeah, there's, uh, there's a number of them. And uh, I wish I had a map with me. In fact, uh, in subsequent talks, I'll have a map, uh, which will be put on the on the overhead. In fact, my next talk, I plan to have just that. Uh, I had planned to bring a map here and had all the latitudes and longitudes of all the bases, and I, I can't do that. That uh, would be uh, a nice jail sentence for me, so I, I didn't bring it. So, but other than that, I'll have that all researched for you. Uh, yes, this this woman. Yes, uh, there. As far as there being an inner Earth, uh, a hollow Earth, or anything like this, no, I've never run into anything like that. Uh, however, uh, uh, Al Bielik, uh has been on uh, these uh, tunnel trains at the better part of Mach 2, uh, going from coast to coast an hour and a half, uh, faster than any jet plane that we got, including uh, the SST, uh, uh, or thereabouts, the same uh, rapid speed. But uh, uh, I helped build a lot of these tunnels, and all of the underground, mount, uh, underground mountain or military bases are connected, all of them, all 131 of them. They're connected both by road, not a big freeway under there, but that's uh, at least a two to a four lane road, uh, rather narrow lanes, but they're th there, and they're also uh, high speed uh, uh, magneto leviton train tunnels. Yes, this lady over here. Stand up and speak up, please. Uh, what? What levels of military personnel know about this? Uh, most of the levels of military know about this, uh, especially the higher levels, um, officer, higher officer levels. Uh, the enlisted, I'm sure, don't, or are basically kept in the dark like we are, end quote, we are. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this fellow right here with the hat, hat on. Well, there's 131 of them in the uh, uh, in the United States, uh, 127 of them in the lower 48. Um, there's some in Canada. I'm not counting those. There's some in northern Mexico. I'm not counting those either. Um, they average about four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground, an average depth of 5,700 feet underground. Uh, average cost 17 to 31 billion dollars each. Um, they employ anywhere from 1,800 to 10,000 people. Um, and there's some very large ones now being built in um, Sweden, one of which is repudiated to be 30 cubic miles. It will take five years to build that one at a cost of about two trillion dollars. And that's all being supplied by the United Nations. Yes. Anybody over here? No. This uh, gentleman. Speak up, please. Okay. Uh, you want to know exact locations of all these? Well, for where all of your Army, Marine Corps, Navy, and Air Force bases are, there. Uh, with all the present, not the ones closed in. By the way, the closed down bases are now being used uh, for gasoline storage and uh, equipment storage and these kind of things. So they are not really uh, closed down yet. Boot camps, in quote, boot camps and all this kind of stuff. Uh, So-called prisoner camps and these kind of things. Uh, right now our police, for instance, are uh, training, uh, are being trained by uh, the Air Force and the Army Intelligence and in, uh, in martial law research, as they call it, how dare they call that, that by that name? Oh, where these are, they are where every one of these strategic bases are now. In Colorado, is uh, in in around Denver, there's three of them, and they're fairly small. Some of these bases are only maybe two to three thousand feet uh, in depth. Uh, 
some of them are, uh, were built a long time ago, back oh, 35, 40 years ago, and they're only maybe 500 feet. Um, and they're mostly for equipment storage. Um, and Denver, and then there's uh, Fort Collins. Uh, there's also uh, Colorado Springs area has an algorithm. By the way, Colorado Springs is kind of a famous area. Nikola Tesla's laboratories were in Colorado Springs. And uh, uh, need I say more? I'll leave that up to uh, Al Bielik. Uh, as far as uh, Nellis Air Force Base, there's nine uh, underground mountain bases in Nellis Air Force Base. That's in Nevada. It's uh, north of Las Vegas. Um, uh, there's going to be a, a UFO show and conference in Mesquite here later on this month, and that's up very close to, in quote, Area 51. Um, that whole area, by the way, the state of Nevada is 81 percent, uh, 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 in quote, uh, managed or owned by the federal government. The land is either restricted or run by the federal government. That's why they have, there's uh, groups uh, rising as we speak, uh, dealing with the problem uh, very vociferously. And uh, uh, senators are now getting involved. So evidently, uh, waking up is occurring. Yes, this gentleman over here. Speak up, please. Okay. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, the gentleman asked, are these tunnels connected to large caverns? Yes, these large bases are basically like this, uh, like this uh, uh, Colosseum. Everything's underground. Everything's a city underground. Uh, most most of these uh, bases have uh, are both have military bases and they have uh, all the accoutrements of life. Remember, each one of these costs quite a bundle of dough and and uh, some of it in our tax money, but most of it in clandestine uh, uh, approaches, and that's uh, definitely undermining the country. Yes. Well, some of them uh, have a difficulty in understanding our language. It's too slow to them. Uh, uh, if you've heard whale songs or bird chirpings at high speed, it's about what these aliens sound like audibly to us. So they do, it's a bunch of gibberish. Yes, they've slowly actually broken down. There's 11 prototypes or 11 civilizations of aliens visiting this planet uh, all the time all of which are known by the U.S. military, uh, nine of which uh, are not very good in data. They're pretty bad news, uh, two of which are benevolent, uh, but the benevolent ones have supposedly left. Uh, they have their own little uh, war of uh, sorts, uh, especially the Pleiadesian uh, 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 groups and whatnot like that, of which Val Thor was uh, repudiated to be a, a Venusian, but uh, uh, other people who alert, he looks more like a, a Pleiadesian. He looks normal human, except he's got six fingers and toes. He's got a one lump, oversized lung. He's got two hearts. He's got all kinds of weird stuff. Bones are bigger. Yeah. Uh, the man asked, do I tie in the alien agenda to the New World Order? Yes, sir, 100%. Uh, I can elaborate briefly. Uh, uh, the New World Order right now uh, basically is uh, dismantling countries, uh, uh, governments, uh, telling governments not to war with each other anymore, basically. So that uh, looks good on the outset. Uh, they're taking their orders directly from the aliens uh, who have got their own timetable. They want the One World Order because they want the planet for themselves. Uh, of course, you've often heard of the term Global 2000, and that's a supposed sinister plot, or has been a group of sinister plots to produce uh, uh, biological weaponry to uh, uh, reduce or thin out the so-called ethnic cleanse of uh, the population of the planet by five-sixths, or uh, roughly five of six billion people enslaving the rest uh, uh, to work willy-nilly with the so-called uh, people of the New World Order. Now, the, uh, another peculiar thing is uh, uh, the alien agenda is not really well believed nor understood. 
by a lot of these one-worlders. They don't believe it. They think they've been singled out for uh, their own end of glory, and what they don't know is they're just another human being, and uh, according to the uh, negative or bad aliens, uh, they're just another... Uh, 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 we're considered bags of food to them. They don't uh, eat us uh, like a, we think of a cannibal eating uh, a hunk of meat, but they use our uh, glandular secretions as uh, part of their food base, our blood and our, our, uh, our glandular secretions like adrenal chrome and other kinds of things like this. And uh, in fact, have been, uh, the Atlanta for, uh, Center for Disease Control has uh, figured out ways that we can combat this and all this kind of thing like that. It might be where these new designer diseases like AIDS and Ebola and Hantavirus and all these kinds of things have come up out of nowhere, and these diseases, in quote, uh, almost have a mind of their own. Yes, this lady here. Okay, lady asked, uh, is the tunnel building uh, uh, having a... Uh, an effect with uh, earthquakes, uh, uh, yes, it could very easily be, although uh, uh, got to remember uh, uh, a lot of these underground um, uh, bases are, uh, are constantly being repaired, and so a lot of people have to be hired. Uh, as far as uh, the U.S. government, uh, second part of her question was, uh, uh, is the U.S. government modifying our weather? Yes, that's an affirmative. Uh, and we have uh, the U.S. government's been working with the Russians for at least since 1972 and maybe as early as 1966 on weather modification. And it's a well-known fact, and it's well employed. And by the way, uh, they can uh, literally weather modify a hurricane or a tornado out of existence. And the reason they don't do it is uh, pretty obvious. Uh, right, or they could actually uh, send a plane inside of a hurricane, for instance, that would uh, blow off an atmospheric bomb or a shockwave bomb in the eye of the thing, and it would completely dissipate. Well, they don't do this, of course, and uh, uh, there's probably other reasons for that, see which way it goes or what kind of havoc and how we can study the havoc, and we go from there. Uh, this fellow way in the back in the black... How do we learn more about our general topic? Well, there's uh, this particular fellow, his name is Richard Souter, Ph.D., he wrote a book recently, Underground Bases and Tunnels, What is the Government Trying to Hide? That is one book. Uh, then we have uh, other, uh, here's a popular science article, Secret Air Base, the government doesn't want you to know that Groom Lake, uh, supposedly Groom Lake doesn't exist. Well, I guess if it doesn't exist, then me talking about it, I guess I can't be arrested or anything. I'm just you know, full of poppycock here. Well, the editor, Papa, one of the editors of Popular Science that put this article out is now in federal prison. Uh, then there's a, a book that, uh, oh, Stealth Fighter Pilot. These books are available. I got this one at Dalton's. Uh, 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 this one actually was sent to me by the publisher. Uh, I did some test piloting, and the only thing I test piloted was uh, would run the aircraft back and forth on the runway, the special runways we built at Groom Lake. There's a picture of me right, in in uniform, and uh, I can go on. And uh, these publications are out now, and and they're available. Uh, yes, this lady over here. I can't hear you. What? Okay. Um, okay, that's uh, kind of a mixed bag question there. Uh, she asks, uh, um, with martial law being called, will uh, precious metals and all these kinds of things. First of all, hoarding anything will be outlawed. Uh, if you hoard food, have a radio, any way of communicating, uh, stash gasoline, uh, these kind of things, you will just be rounded up and that will be the end of you. Um, martial law is martial law. Martial law is dictatorship of the worst form. 
or one of the worst forms. And uh, uh, her other part of the question, if I if I got it right, was uh, uh, is it uh, when's the alien takeover? Well, the alien takeover right now is and probably will be for some probably the next 10, 20, maybe 30, 40 years, will be basically in the in in the background. The idea is to get the uh, the, the one world beast-like government order in place and to thin out the population of the planet. And then, of course, then all heck will break loose from then on. And uh, whether it is, uh, I don't often mix Bible and talk, but uh, uh, some people have alerted, well, this is already mentioned in the Bible, blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. Well, that may be, but all I can tell you is, is uh, uh, I've been face to face uh, with one of these sinister characters, or a couple of them, and saying the least. And uh, um, uh, most people would uh, just the shock of them seeing such a thing would uh, cause them to uh, uh, not be in very healthy mode, frame of mind, as well, physical as well as mental. This man here in the blue coat. Well, it's a combination. Uh, the, uh, what technology is used to build these underground bases? Uh, uh, well, we have uh, lasers that can drill out or basically deflagrate or melt out a tunnel seven miles a day. And that tunnel is 28 feet wide, 28 feet high. Uh, they have, uh, you've been told about uh, drilling and boring machines in a very slow quarter of a mile a day. Most of that went out in World War II. Most of that's all World War I or World War II era materials. And once again, you've been badly lied to. Uh, I uh, can hardly believe, first of all, I've worked on public engineering projects and we do better in grinding up road beds and re uh, laying them down at the rate of four miles a day and uh, supposedly that doesn't exist well i work uh, on one you know state of oregon just a few months ago and we built an, a tunnel for a, a sewage tunnel and whatnot like that it wasn't very big it was about six feet across and i built grilled right through solid rock right to the uh, base of uh, under uh, one of the hills in Portland for their new uh, light rail. Did that in two days. But it was a complex, it was a small complex tunnel. It was big enough for a man to crawl through and inspect. I was one of the people that inspected, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what technology? Uh, a lot of this is alien technology, uh, readapted for our own use, but a lot of it's our own ingenuity too. So. Uh, uh, you can bet, uh, how can you tell alien technology? Well, anything that's just absolutely outlandish, like uh, taking a uh, uh, oxyacetylene welding torch and trying to cut into this metal and getting nowhere, obviously, would be uh, uh, metals research, uh, 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 aircraft research and the like, and uh, different tools and products, which are things that are uh, Many times the hardness of diamond or, or known uh, hardened substances, uh, substances like uh, borazon. Um, obviously, that's uh, nothing that we came up with on our own. But we could have over a several hundred year period. But you've got to remember, too, that the military technology is outstripping the public sector technology at the rate of 44 to 45 years of technology for every calendar year, every 12-month calendar year here. So every year going by, by uh, this time in 1996, the military uh, uh, technology will be roughly 45 years more advanced than where we are today. So it's quite possible that way back in 1943, the uh, not, U.S. Navy not only caused the ship to disappear, it literally disappeared and reappeared. Uh, Basically, military technology right now is about 1,200 years more advanced than uh, public state technology. And computer technology right now, uh, it's off the scale, I can't tell you. It's just uh, right now, and uh, employing uh, just in black jet and, uh, and stealth aircraft, uh, the new computers are so completely advanced that uh, we couldn't get them in the public sector for maybe another 40 or 50 years.
Yes, this lady here. Uh, Well, the lady asked with the slave labor camps, are the old, the infirm, the handicapped, are they going to uh, uh, be executed and ex will there be executions? You can bet your bottom dollar there actually will be these things. Um, I wish I knew more, but I don't. Uh, I've had my own agenda to kind of keep up and talk about. Uh, but other than that, uh, yes, I would imagine so. If you look at all the uh, 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 39 uh, uh, prison camps that are uh, presently built, and they're called boot camps, by the way. And, of course, these new trains that they have that have 143 shackle uh, placements per train, uh, why, uh, uh, they're a uh, uh, scary thing indeed. You know what they're called? They're called United Nations Prisoner Transfer Cars. Oh, well, that's an appropriate name, I guess. Well, we got to wrap it up here. Uh, they're telling me it's time. I'll take one more question. This lady over here. Don't brainwash. They don't brainwash you. How do they brainwash 18,000 people that are working? Well, you sign this little piece of paper saying you work, you go to prison for the rest of your days. Or... Uh, you're not going to be taking home a paycheck of about anywhere from 4000 to 40000 per month, depending upon your position. 40000 a month is a lot of petunias. Okay. Well, i got to wrap it up here, folks. So uh, I'll be over in Al Bielik's booth. I think it's over in number booth number 125. Uh, I can take other questions there and uh, let you uh, take a look at artifacts and uh, uh, once again on these artifacts in the very few minutes don't handle them just look at them thank you very much so you can see what it really looks like. It's absolutely just gorgeous from where I'm at. I just had to show you this because I wouldn't want you to miss it. Totally tremendous. We talked to the two owners, and uh, they were very nice, pleasant people. 
Very nice. Told him about Don Newman tape, got your card. Told him about the videotape and everything. Well, he knew what was going on. Wanted to know if we could uh, see it pretty good. We told him we could. Told, gave it to what's his name, you know, to uh, calibrate for us. I'm gonna turn around here for a second. Kind of back, of course. This is the little alien from the uh, other side. Show you where we're staying at. We're staying right here at this place. Not a bad place either. We went 2750 a night to two. It's pretty good. There's no thieves out here or nothing, so they, there's no keys to the lock. And they never used them, so. And there is again from my left eye here until it's going down. There's the uh, Groom Lake there facility way up there. I don't know, I can't see too good in black and white in this viewfinder, but if you might be able to make out that snow up there. Yeah, now you can see it. Snow everywhere. We're going to go down the road here as much as possible. Wait for a little while for the UFOs. There's another little friend of ours. Okay. Hand back again so you get a chance to see everything. There's another friend of ours. Okay, I'm gonna cut off that here. You saw it moving, didn't you? Yeah, sure did. It I did see. a dog leg to the left, then it did uh, a rock, an about face straight up, and then it did a dog leg to the left. I'm to the right. I get really close in this bastard. He gets real strange on me. It's totally around, Phil. Well, I'm going to take a bead on him right now. What? Yeah, get the binocs out, quick. Yeah, I got it. Sitting right on the car. This is it, dudes. This is what we came to see. I got both my eyes open. I saw the dude move. Is he? Yeah. Okay, Phil's got the binoculars on him. He says it's a disc. Now I'm going to get an extreme close-up on him. That's it, an extreme close-up. No, I'm filming. You look. I don't want to break... Right at us. What? Yeah, right at us. Probably eight or nine miles distance. No. Now, when they get back a little bit, you can see... This is the Groom Dry Lake area on the other side of those mountains. Phil, look around the road, see if there's anyone watching us. This guy's not moving, but we saw him move. Yeah. There's a Ford twin cab, and he's going up by the uh, Atomic Energy Road. Yeah? Yeah. Phil, got it running. I can't see anything. I'm hoping that this thing will come in on the film anyway right now. I got the advanced gain button up. This thing's going nuts. I know it. If you guys can hear this tape, we have been watching two flying saucers for what, about the last half hour? Yeah, last half hour. At least the last half hour. It's about 10 to 20 degrees below zero out here. Hey, it looks like I'm getting a heat mirage in this thing. I can't pick them up and I'm getting heat mirages. From this far back. So I'm lucky I turned this thing on. I don't know if it'll come out on the film or not. But I can see the heat mirage right here. Oh, wow. I got both my eyes open so I can see down there and right in here. But believe me, I can't, I can't see anything out of this camera. I moved the camera back and forth, see me? 
The heat mirage will stay right in the middle, no matter what I do. Are they going? Yeah, they're off the floor. Okay. He's moving right, he dipped. He's moving right again, he dipped. Okay, I'm going to point this up the moon real quick. See if I can't see the moon at least. No, I won't even pick up the moon. Really? Oh, I got it now, all right. I don't think... Yeah, I got the moon. That's bright enough. I still need extra light, though. Okay, now listen. Oh, wow, it just did this. Okay, now listen, you guys. We're at the same place that you saw in the movie where all the trucks are stopped and the Billy Goodman shows at in the exact same spot. Okay, and where you guys saw the saucer go up towards the left and then up again, well, this is over about 20 miles from there, towards the left. Um, on this side of Area 51. On this side of Area 51, that's right. We can see these things plain as day. They were coming in behind us sometimes. They have lights, top of lights, the three of them. Coming on the other side of us. I saw one personally go right into the groom dry lake, over the mountain, played lightning bolt. Straight. He saw one too. I didn't see the one he saw. Saw three saucers at once. Setting off his radar alarm like he wouldn't believe. It all was moving unison. Two here, one above it, this way, back way this way, and sometimes this one go further and they go this way. And they're going like this. It's unbelievable, just doing it like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <coughs> so anyway, what, what? About 10 o'clock, we had enough of it being 10 miles away. We snuck up on it, lights out. Probably got in with about six miles in, maybe more. And then, uh, then that security thing with Jake came up after us. So, good night. A one hell of a Christmas, though, I tell ya. After seeing the stuff tonight, I got no doubts whatsoever. These guys got ARVs out here, and they're, they're testing saucers. Well, I saw it tonight with saucers. There's no airplane crap about it. Airplanes can't go zip, zip, you know. Up and down. This is where we were last night. This is the same patch of road where Billy Goodman and all the other people come here. Give you an example of where we are looking this way. This is going west towards Tonopah. I'll show you the road behind us here. This is at full zoom magnification. The road's back there. I don't think you can see it from here. Anyway, there's the car we were at. This is how we were parked. There's the other road we took a ride on last night to go see the saucers that were downed. They were landed flying saucers, there's no doubt about it. Okay, now where am I? We roughly were seeing them right over here. And that's where we were watching them do their thing last night, between here and here flying all over the mountain for about three, four hours. We sat here, got in and out of the car, watched them, the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. This is it. Somewhere on the other side of those hills right there, I'm going to get you a close-up of this, is probably S4. That's where they were testing, right in there. Give you a good idea of where it's at. And man, I'm telling you, they tested something fierce. Okay, I'm shutting it off now. This is the town last night with the lights off about 10, 15, 10.30. Catch those two grounded saucers. Give you an idea here. It's a little bumpy, I'm gonna shut this thing off. But you get a general idea of we had to have our lights off all the way down.
trying to get a close up. Get closer to it. And there's those guys probably looking at us right now, checking us out. I'm going to scan around here to show you just how desolate this place is. It is pretty desolate. Nothing. I mean, there's just nothing here. We just got off these other peaks. There's the road we came in on. You can tell it's way the heck over there. to the road again. Well, I've heard uh, people can get killed if they see too much of them in the mountains. So, you know, prudence is the word. That's right. I've used prudence. <laughs> so, you know, and anyway, I've been cold. 20 below zero out there for that thing. So, you know. All I have to say, it's just been an amazing Christmas present. That's all I'm going to say. Merry Christmas to you all, folks. Um, of course, eventually all that broke down, and uh, uh, aliens are notorious for being uh, liars, even greater liars than uh, so-called, in quote, we humans are. Uh, so uh, uh, alien treaties are often uh, uh, just not even the pieces of paper they're written on. They're just really kind of worthless. Anyway... My work as a geologist in building underground uh, military bases, some of which are over two miles underground. And uh, I think uh, when you listen to Al tonight, if you have a chance to listen to him, uh, uh, he will speak of, uh, Al's actually been on some of the high-speed monorail uh, uh, subway cars, if you might want to call them, that link these bases together. Some of them are capable of uh, uh, riding on a cushion of air about three quarters of an inch off a rail uh, at a uh, better part of Mach 2. And uh, he's actually been on one of these trains. I've only been in one of the tunnels and helped build some of the tunnels. Incidentally, I helped work on 13 deep underground military bases. Actual had hands on experience. Uh, uh, notorious was the one in, uh, in and around the Dulce, the southern, uh, southeastern and southwestern sides of Dulce, New Mexico, in the Los Alamos uh, laboratory regions where we built some hermetically sealed rooms that were very deep, uh, going down over a mile. Um, we also built uh, an additions onto uh, uh, Groom Lake and S2 and S4 complexes. Uh, there are a total of nine underground, are called, they're called DUMBs, like you can learn a lot from this dummy, but uh, D-U-M-B stands for Deep Underground Military Base, and, uh, or a Deep Underground, a DUM-2, for instance, is a submarine base, and I helped build a few of those, too, which are uh, uh, off our continental shelves and then certain islands and uh, out in the Atlantic and the Pacific in strategic locations. Uh, all this, uh, I can hardly, uh, in an hour's time, I can hardly squeeze all this in, so I'll, I'll be kind of rambling here if you just bear with me. The main topic of my discussion here is to link up basically what's going on with these deep underground military bases, what they're being used for, what 
is the present situation now being employed both by our federal government, which is slowly being phased out by the uh, United Nations government, as well as the New World, end quote, the New World Order, which is an even uh, uh, higher entity, and who these higher entities are taking their orders from, and try and link up uh, basically uh, what's going on. A lot of us have been kept in the dark. Uh, we've been given, uh, uh, maybe most recently over here, uh, uh, photographs of an alien at Roswell. I'll just very make a very brief. Author Ron Rommel was about to publish a book revealing what he believed to be the real purpose of the Star Wars project when his body was found here in McClay Park in Portland, Oregon. His death was ruled suicide, but few agree with that verdict. As far as the police and the FBI concerned, it's case closed. Uh, unfortunately, there's the shocking thing that his murderer, I believe his murderer, is still out there at large. Why is it you're speaking out? There have been enough lives taken uh, under the premise of suicide when they were actually very stable individuals. Always had, a, uh, they always had, they had families and they had uh, lives to look forward to, and they had every reason to live. And, and if there is some form of conspiracy out there, then the more people that are talking might end up saving lives in the long run. The great in 1954 treaty would have been violated. After, after the great firefight, the alien-human war, I am the only living survivor talking about it worldwide at all. Only one. The other two are in nursing homes in Canada, and the Canadian government refuses to allow any U.S. people, including myself, to talk to them because they are afraid of kidnap. Probably the reason I got shot to pieces and 11 attempts on my life is I am a... telephone approximately three years ago and in person about two years ago and during that period of time I became very well acquainted with him he was at that time still working for the government and he didn't say much about what he did but nonetheless over a period of time I became well acquainted with him I found him to be a person of integrity and honesty and about one year ago he became totally fed up with the New World Order and the establishment. He thought he was working for the betterment of mankind and the work that he was doing as a geologist for our government as well as for NATO. And he found out that it could be and was actually anything but that. So his revelations became, in many respects, my statement about that. The photographs cannot stand up to a computer grain analysis test and therefore are retouched or faked. Uh, they're not real. The real one, uh, the real photograph of the of the charred or dead alien that was, uh, or one of the several that were uh, autopsied as, uh, over here was given to me by a friend by the name of Skip Frombeck of Seattle. And his father worked uh, as one of the principal doctors. He was from Germany um, at the time and um, uh, worked uh, on some of the autopsy uh, material from what I understand uh, along with other people <clears throat> anyway uh, don't you you just can't believe everything and that goes for me you got to get out there and do your homework like I always say uh, you might uh, don't put your spectacles on you put your skepticals on when you listen to me 
So if we can uh, if we can have a show of hands here, how many people have heard about uh, Roswell, New Mexico? Oh, very good, almost all. And how many people have heard about the uh, uh, black helicopters uh, and the uh, other kinds of flying saucers type uh, equipments out at uh, Groom Lake and other places? Very good. Well, this obviously is a nice enlightened audience. Uh, most of you have probably seen what a black helicopter is or maybe even gotten rare uh, glimpses of uh, an F-117A black jet or stealth as they're uh, often called um, or a B-2 bomber, B-1 bomber or some of these other uh, uh, sophisticated aircraft that are now being uh, touted as the new technology. Once again, where did we get this new technology? Well, obviously we've had a little hand in that. Uh, our little alien uh, so-called buddies, haha, uh, have uh, kind of exchanged things, not without a great cost. Uh, the cost of which has been uh, a lot of people uh, have disappeared. Some, and I'll blow this statistic by you. There's, uh, according to current FBI and Defense Intelligence Agency and CIA statistics, 100,000 children and one million adults disappear every year and these are not kidnappings or murders or rapes or suicides or anything totally unaccounted for and where are these people going to nobody knows maybe one of us uh, in this room or or somebody has uh, has uh, encountered on uh, such an individual and lost a loved one or a friend or something and that's unfortunate uh, my best friend uh, Ron Lee Rummel uh, uh, several years ago got himself murdered because we dared to put out uh, in print at that time I was still working for the government and so was he uh, we dared to put in print uh, that uh, there's and uh, wondered at uh, what's been flying there there's all kinds of things been flying um, let me give you a brief overview uh, start in ancient history land here Back in 1909, the U.S. Cavalry was uh, uh, engaged in uh, catching some banditos that had crossed over the Mexican border into a place called Truth of Consequences, New Mexico. And they went into a cave or a hideout of, and killed the so-called bandits. But what they found out, they couldn't explain. And uh, they were called horseshoe craft at that time, or uh, horseshoe ships. Um, there were UFOs, and they uh, saw these, uh, what they called demons, gray demons, uh, little gray guys uh, all, all around the place. That was in 1909. Now, in 1933, our government was actively engaged uh, with the Europeans, mostly the French and the English, in uh, special uh, researches uh, dealing with uh, uh, aerial phenomenon. And once again, the term flying saucer or flying disc didn't come about until uh, much later, uh, uh, supposedly right around the mid-1940s. Um, in 1946, I might want to add, uh, uh, we were engaged in uh, atomic bomb testing and uh, this, this kind of a like and uh, of course the area of Bikini Atoll uh, some of the pictures are over here on the uh, on the uh, white board uh, are showing with the actual uh, language of the, both the US Army and US Navy uh, archives uh, anyway uh, uh, these uh, flying right. ships were seen as right. right. 1945 right. 46. Uh, some of them were called Foo Fighters and you name it. Um, they were fully known about uh, maybe as early as 1935 or 36 by our U.S. Navy. And uh, there was a shallow underwater base at Bikini Island and that was probably the one reason why uh, a number of atomic bombs were exploded in that area rather than other areas which they could have been even more remote out in the South Pacific. Uh, at Operation Crossroads. Well, uh, anyway, 
And this all led up to uh, uh, later on, about six, eight years later, uh, uh, 1954, uh, during the Eisenhower administration, uh, led to a uh, interesting treaty uh, called the Grieta 1954 Treaty. Uh, it was the Alien Human Treaty. And uh, you know, supposedly the aliens had come in and exchanged technology, and they'd uh, want to take an occasional human being and a few head of cows and accurate books were supposedly to be kept and uh, all this kind of stuff. And Revelations. And I urged him last winter and spring to go public and lecture. Finally got him out. He's given over 30 lectures to date. All very successful, very interesting. In fact, so successful there have been 13 attempts on his life since the beginning of the year. And he survived them all. All I can say is God must be protecting him because he has a message. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Phil Schneider and understand also everything is being recorded and the video and audio tapes will be available later. Please give a warm welcome to Phil Schneider. Thanks, Al. I guess uh, I can always start off by saying loose lips sink ships. Uh, uh, that's almost a pun anymore. I'm Phil Schneider. I worked 17 years for the United States government as a geologist and uh, aerospace engineer as well as a structural engineer. I worked for uh, such elusive uh, and elusive occupations uh, uh, with uh, Boris and Knudsen, Bechtel, Page and Page, uh, Aerospecial of France, uh, uh, and a host of other, uh, EG and G, and a host of other Los Alamos laboratory and these kind of things. But uh, rather than bore you with all those statistics, uh, I've got a uh, cooked up a real mixed bag here of uh, different. Uh, Topics and it uh, might be a little bit uh, like brain overload, but uh, I'll start from the beginning. Now, now, like I said, I worked 17 years, uh, uh, co invented uh, methods of shape charge blasting as well as uh, laser rock deflagration, which means uh, uh, rock is uh, literally. Uh, uh, melted or, or, or powdered by a, a special maser laser combination uh, and the residue of the rock uh, underneath uh, is, uh, is applied as a coating, as a liquid coating, kind of like uh, instant agate, if you could uh, imagine a hunk of agate, uh, which is a hard silica mineral uh, rock, actually. But uh, up here we have uh, another topic. This is uh, an area to where I worked. I worked 11 years of the 17 years at Groom Lake, uh, S4, S2. Uh, it's in the Nellis uh, Air Force Base uh, uh, area. Uh, in fact, Groom Lake is, uh, I'll show you in the picture right here. It's right here. Groom Lake is, uh, quite the place. Uh, a lot of rumors and other kinds of things have come out of there. Uh, of course, people have stood on the outside for years.